Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, the Suns have more defensive options when it comes to check-in MPJ. How do you prepare, how, how do you kind of work towards um, preparing Mike for the different coverages that they can throw in Bridges and Crowder um, and other guys off the bench? Yeah, I mean, I think Michael's seen a lot in a very short, young NBA career, especially last year in the bubble playoffs. First round this year against Portland. Uh, they threw different players at him. We're very physical, smaller guys, bigger guys. Uh, and I think this, this series will be more of the same to your point. Uh, whoever starts off on them, they can go different ways. Uh, they have lots of different defenders they can use. But uh, I think Michael learned a lot in round one, how to own your spot, create separation. And we also learned as a team how we can help him get open and get looks. Uh, I know the one game when we got blown out, Michael only had, I think it was game four, only had three field goal attempts and we made a concerted effort and he made a concerted effort to be much more aggressive uh, and being able to catch the ball face up and find the basket. And, uh, you know, game number one, it's kind of like a first date getting to feel each other. Uh, we'll see what they're doing. They're going to see what we're doing. And then from there, you make the necessary uh, adjustments throughout the series. But uh, I think Michael's more than ready to go out there and counter whatever, try to match up and game plan they use against him. Brandon Cristal, KOA Denver. Coach, you, you said obviously game number one's a, like a first date. You guys got a bunch of rest before game one of the last series. You get a little bit of extra rest, and I know they have the same amount of rest, but how much do you think that helps your team and Nicola specifically just get a little bit of extra time between, you know, round one and round two? Yeah, I mean, at this time of the year, uh, I think rest both mentally and physically uh, is always a positive. Uh, regarding Nicola, he played in every one of the regular season games, all 72, well documented there. And the great thing was in round one, I think that's the fewest minutes per game I think he's ever played in any series. Uh, I think he's right around 35 minutes. So that speaks to the bench playing at a high enough level where I never felt that we had to have Nicola in for 40, 42 minutes in every game. Um, but the weird thing with Nicola is, and we've talked uh, that's why I think he's going to like this series, the schedule of this series. He likes to play every other day. You know, that's what it was during the season. We played every other day, the long breaks, the two days in between. Uh, it can feel long for players. And Nicole is a rhythm guy, and he likes the rhythm of playing every other day. So um, that's what he likes. That's what he got. And hopefully he can use that to his advantage and our advantage. Gerald Borget, the step back Phoenix. Hey, Coach, uh, a lot's been made of that Jokic-DeAndre Ayton matchup, obviously. Uh, two guys that really respect each other and seem to elevate their games against each other. Uh, what do you make of that matchup and the challenges that DA presents for your ball club? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Nicola's had a fantastic year. DeAndre Ayton's had a very good year on a very good team and was really impressive in his first playoff experience in round one uh, against the Lakers. Uh, so what does DeAndre bring? Uh, size, physicality, athleticism. I think he's most dangerous in the open court when he runs to the front of that rim, gets big, and they find him in the paint for easy baskets. Uh, they'll post him up on either block. Obviously, he's got uh, a very good low post game, back to the basket game. Uh, but for me, probably my biggest worry with DeAndre Ayton is going to be after he screens and rolls, putting pressure on the rim, pocket pass, lob pass, and also when the shot goes up, I think he's a terrific offensive rebounder. Uh, there was a game we had maybe two years ago in this building and uh, he just dominated us. I mean, he was just out there moving people to the side and was on the glass and getting easy put back after easy put back. So we'll definitely have to uh, meet and match his physicality and try to limit him uh, to as few easy baskets as possible. Joel Rush, Forbes. Hey coach, uh, I believe I asked you earlier in the season about um, three-point um, shooting from the corner and uh, your defensive style kind of maybe allowing that a little bit as you try to stop some things and give up some other things. But Phoenix is one of the teams that shoots the most from the corner. So just wondering if you approach this game like just sticking with what you usually do or you do try to make some preliminary adjustments around that? No, I mean, we, we've gone through 72-game regular season. We've gone through 
uh, six games in round one against Portland. Uh, so, you know, we're going to do what we do. Obviously, uh, everybody guards things differently. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. It's what you believe in and what you get your players to buy in and commit to. Uh, so we have a good understanding of what we're trying to do. Uh, for me, as a head coach, I don't go into any series saying we have to make these adjustments to what we've done and allowed us to be number three in the West and the fifth best record overall in the NBA. Uh, but if certain things, corner threes or different areas become huge concerns, Joel, we'll definitely make any necessary adjustments to try to diminish uh, all the negative returns that we may be getting in a certain area. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Nicole from Tab Deportes. Hi, Coach. I hope you're doing well. What do you think will be the challenge with the Suns' backcourt, especially Booker and Chris Paul? Yeah, I mean, they're tremendous. You know, they're one of the top backcourts in the entire NBA. Uh, I think what helps us is that we're coming off of a round one opponent who had a dynamic, high-powered offensive backcourt as well with Lillard, Lillard and McCollum. So um, we're going from round one to round two, very similar in terms of uh, what the respective backcourts bring to the table and how this backcourt with Chris Paul and Devin Booker kind of set the table for everything else. We know Chris Paul is a Hall of Fame point guard. Uh, he makes all the right reads. He makes his teammates better. And is one of the best mid-range shooters this game has ever seen. Devin Booker is coming up with a 47-point performance to close out the Lakers, shooting to a very big basket right now. So they were going to require a tremendous amount of attention. And that's something that we've gone over for the last couple of days. All right. Thank you, Thank you Coach. Yep.